Hey, welcome back, military gentlemen. This is part four of the Coast Guard Rescue Summer video series. If you want to see the full interview, the full series of everything leading up to where we are now, I'll include it in the description box below. So let's just jump on into it. Now, let's say you, you made it, you, you, you've you become a rescue swimmer, but let's say maybe there's just the Coast Guard's environment, maybe the, the that type of schedule isn't really for you and you get out. Um, what type of uh, jobs or what type of experience or position would you might be able to get yourself lined up for after you get out? Like being an IT, um, you know, we're, we're, we have a lot of positions for like big companies that, um, that maybe are trying to recruit you because they, they know you have that type of experience. How, how does that work for uh, rescue swimmers? Yeah, it's kind of similar with the rescue swimmer in the rescue swimmer world. When you get out, there's, there's definitely, uh, private companies out there who, uh, who, who do actively recruit rescue swimmers, um, probably not as in demand as the it world. Um, probably not as lucrative either, but uh, we do have job opportunities. Uh, we have, you know, we, we maintain the qualification of an EMT, so we could get out and go straight into that. Um, but a lot of swimmers go out and they'll use their GI Bill and they'll attend a four-year college and, and kind of just do something totally different. Um, I, I, I see that a lot with a lot of my friends who retire. They're like, you know, I think I'm done jumping out of helicopters it's time for a new chapter. And, uh, and, uh, and, and a lot of my friends, just for example, uh, one of my friends who retired, he's a lawyer. Now, uh, another buddy opened up a gym. Another buddy is a, is a tattoo artist. And, and these are guys who had just retired within the last five years who I know pretty well. So they're doing totally different, um, things. And the, the last thing that I wanted to cover is, let's say, you know, because I imagine that it's very hard to not get injured and not, um, uh, you know, to be physically fit enough to be able to do a lot of these types of missions. What happens if you do get injured um, at being a rescue swimmer? Let's say, you know, uh, you get like a really bad injury that maybe keeps you from being able to perform the operations of um a, uh, as a rescue swimmer, not, not an ASC, but as the rescue swimmer uh, job, what, uh, what could you expect with your career? Yeah. So if you get injured really, really bad, so the general rule of thumb is if you're going to be what we call grounded, not able to fly as a rescue swimmer for over a year, generally going to get medically discharged from the military. Um, and that looks different for everybody. Some people can get medically retired if they're injured bad enough. Um, which is, which is a little bit better of a deal than just being medically discharged because if you're medically retired, you get a little bit of money every month and, uh, and, and you get to keep a lot of your um, military benefits. But, and then there's military discharge where it's a, you know, thank you for your service, but we don't need you anymore sort of thing. So um, it could be pretty, uh, it could be a big, a real bummer to get, to get really hurt in this rate, and I've, I've seen it happen. So you said if you're if if you're going to be grounded, um, let's say you're just like unable to do rescues, uh, but maybe you're still able to, you know, do other things. Is um, is that some like are they just going to discharge you or, or uh, medically retire you if you just can't even keep up with the minimum with the qualification of a rescue swimmer or do you have to maintain that qualification in order to be in the rate every e6 and below has to maintain the qualification to be in the rate so yeah that's that you know e7 and above uh aren't required to maintain the qualification most of them do uh to sort of set set the example um uh, and i think it's awesome but yeah us e6 and below we have to maintain the qualification so if, if you're if you're injured, like let's say you're starting to get something that um, is really kind of making it difficult, do you just have to bear with that the rest of your career, or how do most people kind of go about that? Well, no, you're definitely um, um, encouraged to go and get help for yourself, you know. But uh, yeah, people get surgeries all the time. People get shoulder surgeries or knee surgeries, and you know, they're back up in seven or eight months and, and that's totally okay. But it's like when it starts creeping over the 12 month point is when people start asking questions and, 
wondering if, if, if this person's going to be fit for full duty anytime soon um, or whether or not the Coast Guard wants to retain this person. That's got to that's be a very, uh, uh, very challenging thing. That, mm-hmm. that Does that happen pretty frequently or is that pretty infrequent? The medical discharges, I would say, are pretty infrequent, but they do happen. So rescue swimmers are stationed at every air station, but let's say you really want to end up at maybe let's say some of these really cool places like Hawaii or let's say like California. How do you how do you end up at a air station at one of those units? Yeah, so it's just like any other job in the Coast Guard. Uh, when your tour completion date comes around, the what they call the uh, the detailer or the assignment officer sends you a list and it says all these spots are available. Put them in a list of one to 10, one being you really want it, 10 being, you know, you don't want it that much. And what they're going to do is they're going to try their very best to get you to the place that you want to be. And if they can't, they're going to go to the number two spot on your list, try to get you to that spot where you want to be. And then they just keep going down like that. But for, for those of you on the channel that are kind of aware, um, that have watched my previous videos where I talk about priority levels, but uh, for a rescue swimmer, uh, you're going to be all the same priority level unless you're like Oconus, like uh, maybe Hawaii or Alaska. But if you're all around the same priority level, uh, who gets to be able to go to that unit, like if everybody's kind of equal? Yeah, that's a good question. So the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to look at your priority. And if you have a higher priority than the next person, then you're going to get that spot. If you guys both have the same priority, they're going to go to your what the employee review. And if your employee review score is higher, then you're going to get that spot. So I uh, asked the uh, the community a few questions. We got a couple. It was a little bit last minute. But uh, one of the questions that came in was, uh, how many sharks have you punched in your career? <laughs> Zero. No sharks. I know a couple of buddies who who've uh, who've punched sharks though. Yeah, so that is a pretty that is something to to, to be wary of. It happens. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another question came in was how long should you be able to tread water? Oh man, forever. Tread water forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how <Okay>. long? Do, <laughs> as right. long as you want to live, right? Okay. Um. And uh, these these are the last couple questions that I have. But uh, if you could give like w- one really cool mission that you've done, and then one mission that you're just like uh, that you maybe were a little bit intimidated or freaked out by. Yeah. So so a really cool mission that I've done was uh, was actually I was really scared because it was a it was a plane crash on another island when I was I was stationed in Hawaii, and uh, you got when you hear a plane crash. Uh, it was nine people in the water and I'm just thinking like, man, all like, are all these people, is it just going to be a bunch of dead people in the water? That's what, that's what I was thinking of. And so the whole time we're flying out there, I'm just thinking like, all right, here we go. Like I'm going to see some stuff, you know, that, that I can never unsee and just try to carry it out as professionally as I can. Um, and, and what's also running through my head is, man, there's nine people in the water. Like, I've never pulled nine people out of the water before. But uh, but we got on scene, and it looked like um, – I was like, man, everybody's in the water with, in life jackets. And it was actually um, – it actually turned out really well. And then other helicopters flew in, and it was one of the coolest things ever. There was three other helicopters out there pulling people out of the water, and we're all just pulling people out of the water. Um, unfortunately, one person did die. Uh, and I did pull her out of the water, but, um, I was really ex- expecting it to be, um, a way gnarlier, a way gnarlier scenario. I mean, it was still pretty gnarly, but, uh, but, but yeah. And, uh, the case that freaked me out the most was actually the last case that I had, um, before I became an instructor, we, uh, we responded to a, a mayday call and uh, and all we had to triangulate the location was just this radio call so what they did was they 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 just tracked where the radio call came from on the strongest signal and the radio call said mayday mayday we we crashed lanai cliffs like that was it and and we had an idea where the lanai cliffs were but 
Lanai is actually, it's an entire island. So it, that has a lot of cliffs on it. So we kind of had an idea of where we thought it would be. The first helicopter went out, didn't find anything. And then we went out, uh, we were the second helicopter on scene and uh, we searched for two hours, didn't find anything. And, and the pilot goes, hey, let's take one more pass. We had to get gas. We were already what we call bingo for fuel, where we have just enough gas to get to the airport that we're supposed to land to. And we were we were bingo for fuel. And uh, he goes, let's take one more pass. And we take one more pass. And I'm looking out of the window, and, and, and he's looking out of the window. And we're all searching. And he goes, holy smokes, there he is right there. And he's waving at us. It's pitch black, um, but we have night vision goggles on. I'm in my flight suit. I didn't have enough time to put my wetsuit on, so I just, I just threw my fins on right over my boots, and uh, we went into a hover. I deployed out of the helicopter, swam over to him, and I'm like, um, I always fall back on my training, and I said, hey, sir, are you injured? And he's like, no. I was like, is there anybody else out here with you? And he's like, yeah, my buddy was, and I was like, the water was, the water was flat calm, and I'm like, well, where is he? He's like, I don't know. And I was like, what do you mean? You said he was right next to you. I was like, where did he go? He's like, I don't know. He just disappeared. And I was like, what? what? I, 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 wouldn't, I couldn't comprehend it. I'm like, what do you mean he just disappeared? He's like, he just disappeared underwater. And I'm just like, were you guys fishing out here? He's like, yep. And I was like, were your coolers full? He's like, yep. And this, this place is known for being one of the most sharkiest places in the world. And, uh, and I remember just thinking, oh my God, this other guy got eaten by a shark. And so I put this guy in the basket and I sent him up. And when you, when you send somebody up in a basket, the helicopter hovers back and they go pretty far away from you. And I felt it probably took about five minutes for them to come back to recover me, but it was the longest five minutes of my life. That was the case that freaked me out the most. I was just looking down, waiting for a shark to come up and just attack me. Wow. And so you, yeah. you, know, you, you never were able to find the other guy? No. Wow. Yeah, that, that's a uh, that's, uh, very, very, very freaky story. Very freaky. But, yeah, that uh, one freaked me out. But uh, thank, thank you so much, Mark. Uh, do you have any, any last words? Uh, I know that this video series is going to be uh, very uh, influential to a lot of people that are interested in joining the Coast Guard to become rescue swimmers. Do you have any last words to all these people that are interested in becoming rescue swimmers? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, first, just thank you so much for having me on. It's, it's an honor to be on your, on your um, podcast. And, uh, and just what I... It's like the same things that I tell my students, the same things that I tell my kids. That nothing's going to ever substitute hard work. Um, hard work is, is the backbone of what's going to get you through rescue summer school. And nothing, there's nothing that you could do that's going to substitute that. There's no easy trick that's going um, to help you through rescue summer school. The bottom line is you got to grind it out. You got to show up every day. You got to keep going when you don't want to that's where you really make change that's where the real change happens when when you're when you're super smoked and you still got another 50 percent to go you know like that's that's where the real change happens and that's what summer school is all about so train hard um and and you know make your training progressive make it harder and make it harder and make it harder and that's it keep moving forward Alrighty. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Mark. I'll include uh, everything in the show notes, uh, ways to be able to reach out. That is really nice of you to, to uh, encourage people to reach out for that type of training, getting people uh, future rescue summers prepared for the school. And uh, thank you, everybody. And until next time, Military Journeyman, peace out. All right. Hope you guys like this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you're enjoying these, just smash that like button for me. Let me know that you are enjoying these conversations. If you want to see the full interview of this series, I'll include it right here. Or if you want to keep watching something else, you can watch this right here. Until next time, peace out.